So did anyone else find it odd that when Moon Express announced two days ago on July 12th, which you may have seen the headlines going around all over the world, that they're going to establish the very first outpost ever on the moon to conduct mining operations by 2020. But the part that really caught me off guard was the location of this robotic outpost. They're going to put it at the south pole of the moon, which is what? Oh, I don't know. Seven, eight hundred, maybe even closer to a thousand miles from where humans have ever even stepped foot. And they're going to do chose that place for the very first mining operation. Huh? Interesting choice. I mean, what brought them to that decision? It's almost as if they know something that, well, we don't. You know, there's many questions and mysteries about our moon that have gone unanswered, and I find it really interesting that NASA has no plans to go back to the moon, yet all they talk about is Mars, Mars, Mars. I mean, take for example in January of this year how scientists from UCLA determined that the moon is significantly older than we ever thought. In fact, it might even be as old or older than the Earth or as old as the solar system itself, which raises all kinds of questions involving its origins. In fact, the mysteries go far deeper than that. Besides the fact that they have found processed metals such as brass and mica on the moon, they have also found uranium-236 and neptunium-237 on the moon. Well, why is that significant? Well, besides the fact that this is seldom ever discussed, and by the way, this comes from NASA scientists themselves and scientists at MIT. I mean, this isn't a secret, but nobody talks about it. It's like they discovered this and just left it alone. But more specifically on why this is so interesting is that these elements have never been found to occur naturally. In fact, uranium-236 is a radioactive nuclear waste which is found in spent nuclear and reprocessed uranium. But even more interesting is that Neptunium-237 is a radioactive metallic element and a byproduct of nuclear reactors and the production of plutonium. But this little known fact of processed metals and artificial elements on the moon is just seemingly left out of any conversation from the mainstream or even NASA altogether. I mean, <laughs> it's not a secret, but literally you have to be a weirdo like me and go looking for the information to find it. You know, many people don't believe that we went to the moon, but there is a significant amount of evidence that shows that, yeah, we have indeed been to the moon. The real question is, when did we first go to the moon? What did we find there? And when's the last time we've been there? Does anyone else think that it's odd that the United States, in the middle of a Cold War and a space race with Russia, would send a couple astronauts to the moon for the very first time on live TV in front of a global audience, knowing that there was incredible risk and dangers and the likelihood that they would, well, die in the process? Insiders have told and spoke about this before, and many people have shunned them. I mean, Alex Jones has reported on this, and I'm not an Alex Jones fan, to be honest with you, but... He's been right about a number of things, so you can't just dismiss everything he says altogether. But regardless, he claims that really the story is that, look, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were not the first on the moon. Hence why, I mean, look at the Apollo 11 press conference on how unbelievably awkward that is. They lack any enthusiasm for it whatsoever, despite just coming back from being the first people to set foot on the moon and being global superheroes overnight. Yet they, became, they came home and became massive drunks. Neil Armstrong did as little public appearances as possible to the point where he pissed off NASA. And then he went into hiding for more than three decades without doing a single uh, formal public interview about his experience. I mean, that's really odd. To be honest with you, I think we're there right now and that we never left. If you think that sounds crazy, then you should probably start asking yourself what in the world our deep state intelligence agencies did with the more than six and a half trillion dollars that has just vanished from the Pentagon. I mean, you may have seen these stories circulating around the uh, news outlets from last September and August from 2016. And then we just never hear anything about it since then. Nothing from President Obama or President Trump. It's just the story's just gone. But what did they do with the money? I mean, six and a half trillion dollars is practically an infinite amount of money. I guarantee you there's a hidden space program, and we're on the moon right now, and there's far more to it than we ever thought possible. Have you ever heard of the hollow moon theory? Well, it's more than just a theory because the evidence is overwhelming. I mean, besides the mathematical formulas and equations that are utilized for measuring mass, NASA and other scientists have been baffled on why the moon just lacks so much mass that it should have based on all the other calculations that we have about it. Yet when experiments have been done from the seismographs placed from the early Apollo missions, such as when we threw the Saturn V launch vehicle from the uh, Apollo 13 mission, when it crashed into the moon, it resulted in an impact equivalent to approximately 11 tons of TNT. 
And when they did that, the seismographs bounced with wavelengths for more than three hours and 20 minutes. And scientists from MIT literally stated that it rang like a bell and they're completely baffled by it. And the only explanation that they have is that, well, the moon is hollow, which raises all kinds of other incredible questions. So take, for example, the fact that there is an abundance of titanium on the moon. In fact, concentrations of rocks that contain titanium on the moon versus Earth show that the moon has 10 times as much titanium than Earth. Hence the reason why they're in such a rush to go mine the place. But there's other questions, such as the big mystery on why these massive craters on the moon are so shallow, like dinner plates. They can't account for it. They don't know why they're so shallow and that the depth versus width ratio doesn't add up whatsoever. Could this give credence that maybe there is a titanium sphere on the inside of the moon? I know that sounds crazy, but let me show you some more information on that. And by the way, research the hollow moon theory for yourself, but you'll notice that the mainstream just ignores it altogether, and all you have is fringe media outlets that compare it to being a Death Star. Seriously, can't we have an adult conversation and just look at the data and ponder on what the possibilities are? I mean, isn't it really interesting that ancient civilizations discuss the time before the moon? Whether it be authors from ancient Greece or Rome, or even the Zulu tribes in Africa that discuss this in depth. Or even allusions to the time before the moon mentioned in the Hebrew Bible. In fact, these legends even go all the way over to South America from native tribes from the mountains of Colombia. I mean, we can't just dismiss verbal legends altogether. I mean, after all, hundreds of civilizations across five continents around the world ended up being right about the stories and legends of a great flood. Because it's been scientifically verified that, yes, approximately 13,000 years ago, there was a sudden and rapid 400-foot rise in global sea levels. And those legends survived more than 12,000 years. So is it possible that these legends may be true and that, well, maybe the moon was brought into orbit around the Earth far sooner than we ever thought possible? And everything is just lined up just perfectly to allow for an abundance of life to essentially flourish here on Earth. I mean, it's also worth mentioning that our moon is so unique and of itself that it's the only moon in our solar system, or even in the observable universe for that matter, that has a nearly perfect circular orbit. It's technically still elliptical. However, there's no other uh, moon that orbits its planet that we have ever seen like ours does. Now, let me dump some coincidences on you. Take the ratio 108. If you divide the distance from the Earth to the Sun and divide it by the Sun's diameter, you get 108. Well, the same thing with the Moon. Divide the distance from the Moon by its diameter, and you also get 108. Which is interesting because 108 is mentioned in ancient civilizations. Whether it be the 108 towers in Cambodia, or the significance of 108 in the Hindu religion, or even 108 that might have some similarities to the Stonehenge monuments with the outer perimeter equaling uh, 100.8 feet. And all of these things allow for a near perfect solar eclipse. Well, perfect to within 99.9%. .9%. But the coincidences don't stop there. In fact, the sun and moon appear the same size in the sky because the sun's diameter is about 400 times greater, but the sun is also 400 times further away. But not only that, the earth rotates at a speed 400 times faster than the moon. And another number, 366. The earth spins 366 times during one year, and the polar circumference of the earth is 360 times bigger than that of the moon. For the sake of brevity, I'll stop there, but the coincidences don't just stop there. It's unbelievable just how perfect everything is between the Earth and the Moon. These perfect alignments, the mass of the Moon, and its perfect orbit and distance from the Earth have allowed for incredible amounts of life, for the tides, for the seasons. And although I'm not saying that the Earth would look anything like these other places we've landed on without the Moon, it sure is interesting on how grateful we should be for, well, whatever put the Moon in its place when and where it did. But there's other outstanding questions about the Moon such as the Apollo 10 mission where they did a practice run where they did a lap around the moon prior to the Apollo 11 mission, where the astronauts overheard what they describe as music. There was a rhythm, it was incredible, like nothing they've ever heard. And they spent the better part of an hour while on the far side of the moon discussing this. And that's when they heard it, while they were on the far side of the moon, so it couldn't have been anything coming from planet Earth. And although I'm not suggesting that it's aliens on the moon listening to music, all I know is that the astronauts were freaked out about it, and they spent the better part of an hour discussing on whether they would even share that with NASA for fear of what it would do to their careers. And you know what NASA did? They kept this story secret for nearly 50 years. That's kind of a red flag to me. 
And to throw even greater mystery into the moon, are you familiar with what's called lunar transient phenomena? Where dating back to the 1100s, there's been several notable occasions where people on Earth have observed glowing lights and fluorescent lighting on the moon. Many of which cannot be explained through meteorites, which would, you know, maybe be a flash of light or even volcanic activity, which would be sustained glowing red, uh, you know, lighting, which has been observed, which some, which has never been proved to be volcanic activity, by the way. But take, for example, the Apollo 11 mission. Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, they're on the way to the moon, just hours from stepping foot on it. People back on the Earth are planning their barbecues. Meanwhile, NASA calls to Apollo 11 to say that through their telescopes, they observed some sort of glowing greenish light on the north side of the moon. Immediately, Michael Collins radios back, and they were observing it as well. And they described it as a slight fluorescent lighting. And then this story was just never heard from again. They didn't make it classified. It's not secret. But you would expect that to be a headline of some sort. I mean, think about this. Just hours from stepping foot on the moon for the first time, there's only been several notable occasions of these lights ever being seen. And it just so happens from the first time we're ever going to step foot on the moon, this is observed by NASA from Earth as well as the astronauts in, that are about to land there. And the story just gets, you know, omitted from the headlines altogether. Isn't that interesting? Maybe we should go back to the moon and look at these places where these lights have been seen from. Maybe we should go back to the moon and figure out why the moon uh, craters are so shallow. Or why there's processed metals or uranium-236 and neptunium-237. Add all these things together, guys, and so you get some really interesting conclusions. Anyways, guys, it's time we start asking serious questions about the moon. It's time we start entertaining the fact that, you know, maybe it was geoengineered by some advanced race who knows how long ago? I mean, I know this sounds crazy, but when you can take into consideration all the impossible coincidences, well, I mean, maybe it's not impossible, but do you think it's just a coincidence? I sure don't. Anyways, guys, I'll leave it at that. Like and subscribe. Leave me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are, and I have many other videos to come on a whole wide variety of topics. I'm Jimmy. This is Bright Insight. Take care, everybody.